Let's say that you're making a brand new blaster line, or a brand new type of dart, and you need blasters to shoot that kind of dart. What's the first thing you should make? That's right, I'm just going to assume that you said the right thing, which is a pump action, magazine fed, blaster from the very beginning that should be the first thing look at the adventure force nexus pro it's a pump action magazine fed blaster and once you get that then you can start getting weird and experimental and doing fun stuff but you always need to have that baseline because everything's gonna be compared to it now look at nerf rifle how many pump action magazine fed blasters are there i know it's it's actually quite difficult in fact most of the pump action magazine fed nerf rifle blasters you see are mods of like the Helios or the Apollo with 3D printed kits on them. There is the Hypnos, but it doesn't load in your typical way. The Hypnos has got that weird like rear magazine P90 style loading thing, which while cool isn't exactly super comfortable. The Atlas had the same thing, but of course the Atlas fired two rounds at once, although you could mod it to not do that. But we'll make it even easier. What about a just normal pump action magazine fed rival blaster or equivalent that works like a alpha trooper or something with the magazine in a place that you would expect it to be like a nexus pro yeah even if you try to get crazy with things like the dart zone titanium where you could technically put a magazine on the top of it but it made it look like a unicorn that's still not quite the same thing as having it in a typical configuration that you would expect so really your only option is modding or a 3d printed kit and i know there's probably a ton out there that i'm not aware of but the one i'm going to show you today is actually really freaking cool and it's for a blaster that you wouldn't exactly expect when the nerf rival finisher came out it was kind of a meh thing like it it wasn't something that you'd necessarily want to go on and just immediately grab, but at the same time, it wasn't terrible. It was kind of a sign of darker things to come because it was made out of way cheaper stuff, but it's a $15 mag-fed pistol in the rival line, and it was filling a niche that technically didn't really exist at the time. And this just takes it to an extreme cool level this is franz foam works project athena it is a kit that you could put on a nerf rival finisher to turn it in to a pump action carbine style blaster which is just absolutely crazy to me And that does mean that now you can very easily get yourself a pump action rival blaster that works exactly how you would expect a pump action blaster to function with the magazine in a logical spot with a pump grip even with a stock attachment point and everything on it this kit does it all this kit was sent to me for review but of course i had to install it and we're gonna start with that because installing the athena is a one-way process while you technically can remove everything, you're going to have giant holes in your blaster where you had to cut out material in order to install it. And honestly, it does require some cutting, but using just a box cutter, a pair of really cheap hobby nippers, and a screwdriver, it was incredibly simple. I, I didn't even have to really measure anything. I just kind of cut into it and it fit perfectly. I looked at a picture, copied the picture, made the blaster. There was a little bit of cutting and sanding after the fact to make sure everything kind of clamshelled together properly, but... After that, it worked perfectly fine. It just kind of fits together and turns it into this. And I gotta say, this thing looks absolutely amazing and is one of the most tactical blasters I have ever seen. Project Athena really does kit out your Nerf Rival Finisher into a Mall Ninja's wet dream. It adds so many rails everywhere and you could probably get more rails for it if you wanted for all sorts of different attachments. The kit does come with a couple of different options such as the priming grip. There are different configurations for that if you want a different kind of foregrip or you could just put on a different one because it's a Picatinny rail. It's also got spots for sights if you want to put those on Picatinny or you can use the original Rival one if you choose and it does have a stock attachment point but it does come with an option for a stock which is their kind of wireframe option that you see here that i happen to quite like the minimalist design of that and that does turn your finisher into a completely 
different beasts. The priming is very smooth. It has a little bit of that kind of nylon rubbing sound that you get with 3D printed parts, but it's not nearly as bad as things like the original Nerf Apollo pump action kit that I know Worker put out and a lot of other people have kind of taken a stab at. This one is a little bit better than that, but if you want to try to completely eliminate that sound, you can literally use like packing tape and that will get rid of the plastic on plastic contact. The priming linkage is metal on this blaster and it does include a sight that also includes a side mounted rail. So if you wanted to be extra tactical, you can of course aim like this with another sight right there. And this kind of thumb hole stock thing, which I'm, I haven't just, I'm a little surprised and almost insulted that it has this big, huge hole right here, and yet there's no grip guard. I do like myself some thumb hole socks, and this one is completely unobtrusive. I don't feel it whatsoever. It just gives me that extra bit of bracing right there if I wanted to hold the blaster with one hand. I was a little worried with this blaster because you do have to remove the hop-up tab in the barrel in order to get this to work right because the barrel is much longer than it is initially. That was as simple as just cutting it out, like snipping it out with a pair of snips. There's no additional hop up in the barrel or anything. It just completely deletes it and it works perfectly fine without it. I dare say it's even slightly more accurate. And the print quality that I got from Franz Foam Works in terms of the 3D printed stuff is pretty good. It's not the best I've ever seen, but I've certainly gotten products that are much worse. Now, this is a completely stock blaster at this point. I did cut and install this kit for the pump action and everything like that, but the internals, besides lock removal, are still completely bone stock. So honestly, quite impressive for stock performance, and it's extremely comfortable and fun to use. And this is one of those things where you probably see the price tag. It's around $60, $70 before shipping, and you might think that is not worth it for my $15 rival pistol, but, if you wanted this kind of platform, you wanted the magazine in a logical location for your blaster, you wanted pump action to be competitive, you wanted to use Rival especially, and you wanted something that wasn't really all that difficult to install, this is one of the only ways you can really get that. And that's one of the cool things about 3D printed designs, because if I want to have this, I basically, my option is to just buy the thing and make it, and that's how it goes. But there are some cons here, because they're using the base of the finisher, and the finisher has some issues. Honestly, you think I'd rail about the trigger because the trigger uses one of those plastic springs, which it's kind of a new thing that we're seeing recently from Nerf, and we have no idea how long they'll actually last, like how many trigger pulls until that little piece of plastic breaks or something like that, but the trigger pull is actually really nice on the finisher. I have zero complaints about that, but it's quite nice. The problem is the catch in the finisher is kind of awful, as is pretty much everything with like the plunger tube and everything, which is a rather sizable plunger tube, but it really does not like you messing with the spring. The spring in here, bone stock, is almost maxed out. You can upgrade it and it will take that because these are metal priming linkages and everything like that. You don't have to worry about it breaking, but there's only so much that you can do to the finisher without more work being put into it with like a new catch or something like that. So if you do plan on buying this kit, I would expect it to not hit more than like 100, 120 FPS. I wouldn't want to take it much farther than that, but your mileage on that is going to kind of vary. I'm happy having this thing stock because if I wanted to use it in a stock war, I have this cool thing that nobody else will really have that does something unique. And for HVZ and whatnot, you wouldn't really need to have anything more than stock performance. That 80 to 100 FPS is certainly enough to hit people that are running towards you. I'm even impressed with the stock. I did have to print this one out myself. They sent me the bars and the hardware, but I had to print out the connector right here and this butt stock, and I ran out of black filament, of course. But it's really nice and solid in the hand. There's no wiggle or anything like that, and that prime is so comfortable. I like me an angled foregrip, and this one is just so smooth. Ugh. You really have to try it to believe it with something like this. So do I recommend this kit for the Nerf Rival Finisher from Franz Foamworks? If you're looking for a blaster like this, it's pretty much the only way you're gonna get it. This thing looks really awesome with the angled magazine, the pump grip, everything reminds me of like some kind of SMG from like Destiny or Titanfall or something like that. I really do enjoy it. The parts are really nicely designed. But if you're looking for like super crazy high performance everything, this is definitely not the kit quite yet for you. I, I do know that Franz Foamworks is going to be spending some time trying to come up with some different designs for catches and spring upgrades and stuff like this. So there most likely will be more stuff coming out for the finisher in the future. But right now, as of where it's at, I wouldn't expect more than like 100, 120 FPS caps out of this kind of setup. And I do have to harp about one thing. 
I point this blaster at you, can you tell that I'm holding a toy? That's kind of an issue, and that's something that I would really like to see remedied on this, a 3D printed cap, either, either towards the end of printing, just swap out the black filament with bright orange or something like that, so when I'm pointing it at you, you can see bright orange on it. I think that's really important for something that could be used in a public setting. It's not so much looking at it from the side, that should bother you when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's when it's being pointed directly at you or being pointed at somebody else that you're seeing from a weird angle, it makes it look like an actual firearm. And that is one of the reasons why things need to have orange muzzles on them. But this is all really easy stuff. This is a very early design of the Athena and I'm sure some stuff can be changed and tweaked in the future if they so choose. I was not paid anything for this review. I happen to really like this and it does have Walcom S7 stamped on the stock bars, which I thought was pretty cool. And while Rival isn't necessarily my thing, I actually really think this blaster is super comfortable to use, well designed, and most importantly is magazine fed. So if I wanted to use this in like a stock HVZ or something like that, I totally could. And I really don't have a lot of blasters that I felt comfortable doing that kind of thing with. You can carry a lot of rival rounds on you and they're really easy to reload the magazine, so it's definitely an attractive option for me in the future. So if you do want to pick one of these things up, there will be a link down below where you can check it out for yourself. Other than that, I'm pretty impressed with it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Walcom S7. Make sure you check out the Teespring either by the shelf down below the video, in the description, or in the pinned comment, where you can pick yourself up your own Adventure Shop Waffle shirt. This is a limited time design. It will not be around forever. It will be going away, and we will have a lot more shirts coming. There's actually three new designs up there already, and within the coming weeks, you'll see even more of them, and I'm super excited to show you guys what we've been up to these past couple of weeks. Thank you again for watching, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. You gotta up, up, up.